watch him closely. What's the secret, Max? You just gotta find something you love to do and then do it for the rest of your life. I don't want to be a product of my environment. I want my environment to be a product Hello and welcome to The Establishing Shot, a podcast where we do deep dives into directors and their filmographies. My name is Eli Price. Uh, I'm the host of this podcast and this is episode two of The Establishing Shot. Uh, Starting off strong uh, by bringing on Jacob Phillips again. Um, That's right. Hopefully you listened to last week's episode and uh, met Jacob. Uh, If not, uh, I would hit the pause button and go load up the episode one because uh, we did a very deep dive into Wes Anderson, his background, his techniques, that sort of stuff. So um, it's a great primer for the rest of the series. So, yeah, today we're um, in episode two and it'll be our first uh, film in Wes Anderson's filmography, which is Bottle Let's Rockets. Go. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, if you're, uh, unfamiliar with what we're doing here, you know, we're doing deep dives into directors and, um, that means we cover a lot of stuff about the director in general, and then we do each movie, each episode. So we're going to go through all of his movies starting with, uh, today, um, with Bottle Rocket. So yeah, since everyone should already know Jacob, um, I do because uh, he's <laughs> one of my one of my friends but uh yeah um since we know each other uh we don't have to do any introductions let's just jump right into bottle rock do it um yeah so uh jump in head first uh dignan style if you will that's right yeah we've made a plan we have an outline uh s- seven year plan for the uh bottle rocket <laughs> episode and right. uh yeah we're just gonna jump right in so um yeah, uh, it, last week I kind of covered, um, kind of accidentally, I just was like in the moment and I like covered a lot of the the Bottle Rocket kind of beginnings in that introduction to Wes Anderson. But it's it actually is really important to understand, you know, how this movie got made to kind of understand how he got started. So Absolutely. I'm glad I went ahead and uh, covered that last episode. Uh but yeah, so we'll just overview that again really quick. Um, you know, this is obviously his first movie. They made the short first. Um, and actually, they weren't planning on making a short. They wrote a full script, uh, yeah. but they only had enough money to make a, a short. And so... Yeah. Um, and it's just scenes from the movie, essentially. Yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely. If you, if you watch the movie, which I watch the movie and then I watch the short. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, you're just like, oh, this is just like, basically the first half of the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's because they, when they made it, they weren't doing, you know, we kind of talked about it last week. They weren't doing the typical, like let's make a, a short so that people can see what the feature will be. And so a studio right. will pick us up. They were just like, let's start shooting scenes from this, exactly. this script that we've written. So, yeah. So um, yeah, it's, it's funny. Um, it's just funny. That was their mindset. They, they, they weren't really interested in in doing like the typical Hollywood stuff. And they kind of continued that trajectory for the rest of their career, you know, especially Wes Anderson with his writing and directing. Um, uh, But yeah, he, he and Owen Willen, Willen. Wow. He and Owen (laughs) Owen Wilson wrote this together. Um, Yeah. You know, uh, they actually wrote those first three movies together. Um, Yeah. Yeah, which was Bottle Rocket, Rushmore, and the Royal Tenenbaums um, were all co-written by Wes and Owen. So, yeah, they really started things off together. Um, You know, um, yeah, some of the most interesting things about this movie to me and as far as like it getting made and and I'll let you share anything that you thought was most interesting. But I, I think the most interesting thing is just like the the testament to uh 
kind of Wes, Wes's especially, but you know, Owen Wilson also as his kind of co writer, they're just like tenacity through the process of getting this film out there. You know, yeah. Um, when you look at, when you read or watch interviews with guys like Jim Brooks and Polly Platt who produced it and even, you know, Wes and Owen, they're like, man, this was the worst, the worst <laughs> process. Um, you know, Polly Platt, uh, one of the producers was like this, it was one of, if not the worst, like test screening movies I've ever like been a part of. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just like everyone hated it. Like people were writing on, um, like their notes from the screenings, like this sucks, like in all caps. And that was like their yeah. only note. Uh, so I mean, imagine like going through your notes and like most of them are like that. Yeah, no, for real. It, I mean, it's like, it's crazy. I mean, you would think that they did something like incredibly offensive in this movie yeah. for it to get the type of stuff that it got. I mean, just, it was horrible receptions and and we're not sugar like I'm not sugarcoating at all it was awful like the reception yeah. for it yeah i mean like uh i'll have to see if i can find one of the things i had written written down that wes said um yeah he uh so in the interview with wes anderson he said i'm gonna find it because <laughs> it made me chuckle or maybe I will not find it and I'm just going to sit here and flip through pages and make everyone listen to me flipping. Uh, Some sort of like uh, ASMR going yeah. on. Talking oh yeah. It. He just said, Wes just said, you know, they were kind of asking him about like the release of the film and how like all that process was. And Wes was like, yeah, the whole thing was a disaster. That was, that's a direct <laughs> quote, direct quote that's from awesome. Wes Anderson himself. The whole thing was a disaster. Uh, <laughs> I mean, imagine like going through and making this movie, like pouring everything, you know, months and months into really like a couple of years into making this movie. Yeah. Um, and then like everyone like hates it. Um, yeah. But he he mentions one card that he got where this girl like went into all this detail. I mean, it was like she was she filled out this card all the way and went into all this detail about things she, that she saw in the movie and liked. And um, he said it was like she had written a, like a tiny dissertation on the movie. <laughs> and like he held on to that card. And um, and like years later, he was like at a at a screening or, a, uh, you know, a premiere or something. And um, he this girl walked up to him and was saying something about like, you know, oh, I remember being at uh, at the screening for Bottle Rocket. And he's like, I know who you are. Uh, <laughs> not because like That's he awesome. recognized her, but he knew that she was the only one that liked it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, it didn't get any festivals rejected by Sundance, who who showed the, the short originally. And then um, it opened up just kind of cold like no festival run just opened up cold. Um, it made, um, I think I wrote down, it made $407,000 on a $5 million budget. So made just nothing. like, yeah, total flop, um, in the, in the box office. But really like if you, um, if you look at like interviews, some interviews with Jim Brooks that I was, uh, watching and reading, he, he basically says like, there was this like miracle of a review in the LA times. Um, and then a series of like reviews and like the movie making top tens lists for critics at the end of the year. And yeah. uh, really like he, he kind of says like critics saved their career. Um, it really caught on and it got a cult following. And among that cult following was Martin Scorsese himself, who just loved this movie. Um, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Even eventually like Jim, like was talking to Jim Brooks was talking to Wes and he's like, well, we made cult, um, which, you know, got them their start. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it was funny to me how much Scorsese, like you could tell by his little article um, interview in Esquire. Uh, I think it was right before or after the release of Rushmore. 
um he just like talked about bottle rocket with such like love like um he talks about the scene with dignan like uh going back in um you know he says i'm an innocent and uh he go he i'm innocent he runs like runs back in and there's that needle drop of the rolling stone song yeah and uh martin scorsese he said like that was a transcendent moment for him like wow that's how much he loved that that movie um yeah number seven on his favorite movies from the from the 90s for scorsese yeah yeah i didn't even realize that i saw you had written that in the notes um crazy yeah, that's crazy um but yeah uh, including scorsese and jim brooks like there was a few people that i saw um an essay uh, there was an essay i read um in the wes anderson collection uh by matt zoller sites um they all like all three and i think i saw it even elsewhere describe this movie as like the birth of a voice like it wasn't wow. just the birth of their career, but the ver birth of a new voice in in filmmaking. And so I really think that's like just a testament to how refined and, you know, yeah. like well developed Wes was and his eye for, you know, just filmmaking that early on, um, you sure. know, a, a kid in his 20s, um, just like trying to do something he had wanted to do for a long time. Yeah. Um, he even says like, um, his, the thing that like meant the most to him about the movie wasn't, it was after it got made, they, um, they were doing some final test screenings and finally getting some decent reception, um, from some friends that had watched it basically. And, uh, Jim looked at him and he said, well, it's well directed. Um, <laughs> and like Wes was like, that meant so much to him like that. Yeah. I Jim bet. Brooks told him. Yeah. And it, it really is, um, I, you know, I think it's like, it's not, um, you know, I don't know that it's fully Wes Anderson quite yet. He yeah, had kind of his sure. hands, hands tied in some ways with the way he was allowed to make it and the budget and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's very much still, even if it's not like full on Wes Anderson, it's very much already like almost fully developed Wes Anderson from the get go. Right. There's some, there's some breadcrumbs there that, uh, that leads you into the, the next two movies. And especially I think Royal Tenenbaums, which is like, if you watch that, you're like, okay, yeah, this is, this is Wes Anderson. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. But yeah. So like, um, yeah. Was there anything, um, you, maybe you can jump right into kind of some, some key things in the movie that kind of stood out to you maybe uh, in the techniques or maybe in the themes. Yeah, I think, um, you know, there's definitely some of those, like he has like the, what is it called? The, the God's eye view shot. Yeah. Is that mm -hmm. right? Where it's the overhead. He has right. a couple of those. Um, there's a couple of, I think it's in like the bookstore where they do like the close up of, of the book. Yes. Um, and and just I have an interesting in anecdote general. about that, by the way. Okay. S sweet, sweet. Um, but yeah, and then uh, I, I I missed this the first when I first watched it because I was like, man, it seems like like all the characters like when they talk, you know, if you watch the later uh, Wes Anderson movies or, or even Royal Tenenbaums, like you see, you know, we talked about this in the first episode, the symmetry of like them looking straight on at each other when there's like dialogue when there's two characters mm -hmm. talking, and I was like, oh, he's not really doing that, but I realized like after and, and watched, you know, a couple of videos in, in leading up to, to this in uh, the previous episode where he's actually very still symmetrical where like mm -hmm. the characters are off center, but they're off center, like perfectly, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, right. When they're talking to each other. So there's still like a lot of that symmetry um, there with that. So yeah, I, there's, like you said, it's not fully him, but there's a lot of breadcrumbs that, that kind of lead you, uh, and you can tell you, but, oh yeah, there's, there's that, there's that. Yeah. Um, and which I kind of like if you, if you haven't watched Bottle Rocket, but if you watch the other ones, it's kind of cool going back and watching this one, uh, to kind of see, you know, mm -hmm. like where it kind of all started, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, um, that is, so there's actually like, if you, if you start watching 
through these movies, you'll notice like he does the symmetry thing thing in different ways. So like sometimes yeah. it is that like center frame, like front on right. view, but a lot of times, especially like in dialogue cuts, um, they are like, so it'll cut back and forth and, you know, Dignan will be on this side of the screen. And then when it does right. the cut to Anthony talking, he'll be on this side of the screen with, you know, the, the background going on. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, he's already doing that sort of symmetrical, like editing and cutting. Right. Um, and that's very much like something that you'll see through the rest of his filmography. Um, and, you know, if you were to ask him why he does it, he probably would just say, just cause I like it. Yeah. Um, exactly. That's his answer to like a lot of those sorts of questions. I like it that way. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, do what you like, and that's what he does. Yeah, absolutely. I had, I had actually written down like a few, uh, like just kind of what, uh, those sort of Wes Anderson touches that you yeah. kind of see the first of here in bottle rocket. There's, um, you know, there, there's a few more on top of this and rush more. And probably like when we get to Royal Ten bombs, we'll see a few more West touches kind of show up yeah. for the first time, uh, in these first few movies. But, this one had a lot of them actually when I started thinking about it. Uh you have um the whip pan uh on the on the bus when it's it's looking yeah. at the driver and then it whips over um to um Anthony and Dignan uh talking on the bus. Uh so that was a first. You have of course you have the Futura font already. Mm-hmm. Um classic. Which is yeah, that's the font in like all of his movies. Um uh, our friend Hayden, who will be on next week to talk about Rushmore, w- mentioned uh, when we started seeing the Asteroid City poster in our little text group, he was like, what? No f- future of font? Yeah. Uh, no, for yeah. Real. And uh, so the, you get that for the first time. And that's obviously all through his movies, except for, I guess, Asteroid City. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the needle drops. Man, the, those those needle drops on the soundtrack, which, uh, if I'm, if I'm speaking a foreign language, when I say needle drops, all that means is it's the idea of like in exactly the right moment in a scene, you drop the needle on that track for the soundtrack. Yeah. And it's just the perfect like song for that moment. Um, he's, he's got that already. I mentioned Scorsese, Scorsese is yeah. a bit of a king of the needle drops himself. Yeah. And I think and, that's uh, probably why he like admired not, I mean, that's not the only thing, but like that, that definitely is like, I'm sure if you're good at that as, and as good as Scorsese is, I'm sure he was like, Oh yeah, that's the good stuff right there. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he did. He, I mean, he's in that little uh, piece in Esquire. He, he like focuses on that. Um, okay. You know, that's that was his transcendent moment was that needle drop of 2000 man by Rolling Stones there in that scene. Um, Yeah, so you get the needle drops um, and then uh, you you actually get the first um, little scene of an adult acting like a child and a child acting like an adult with Anthony and his little sister, um, which is always comical and kind of like, you know, really it really like builds the character out. Okay. Like you have this adult acting like a child, but it's not just like that flip. It's also like when he does that, it highlights in what ways Anthony is still like a child, like it highlights his character. So you get that. Uh, And the last thing I had written down that was kind of a first is like all those Wes loves to throw in like inanimate objects just in transitions. Like, you'll be going through something like a scene and then like, there'll be a transition to another scene and you'll see like, he'll just have a frame of an inanimate object or a few yeah. and then move on. Um, you know, I love the little, when they're at the very beginning, when they're robbing um, the house, which you find out uh, is Anthony's house, Anthony's <laughs> yeah. parents' house. Uh, you find that out a, f- a few minutes later, but um there's this scene where like Anthony's going through and they're like kind of grabbing stuff, stealing. And there's all these little soldiers um, lined up on, you know, I assume it's Anthony's room actually oh, yeah. room uh, on a table. There's a little toy, like wooden soldiers. And there's one kind of askew and he like stops and looks at it for a second and it cuts to them. And you see his hand come up and straighten it up. 
Um, yeah. It's like, man, this is, that's like what Wes Anderson does with his filmmaking, you know? <laughs> For sure. Um, yeah. Uh, and actually like you, when you listen to like crew members, they'll talk about how like he'll say, um, they'll be like shooting a scene and he'll kind of stop it. And he'll say, can you like lean forward just a little bit more like to the actor? Like, so like, he's yeah. like, okay, yeah, right there. Now, now go again. <laughs> like he actually does that like in his filmmaking. Um, so I love that. Um, but yeah, a oh, lot yeah. of Wes Anderson so meticulous. touches that are, that you see the first of there, uh, in bottle rocket. Um, yeah. Uh, what, I mean, was there anything else like, technique wise that you noticed that like stood out to you, you know, you mentioned the kind of the sym symmetry already and the, mm -hmm. the cuts between characters and that sort of thing. Um, was there anything else that kind of stood out? So there's, there's a slow-mo at the very end. Um, it's yes, classic. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's the pool scene, uh, loves to shoot people underwater, um, yes. swimming. So there's that as well. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's just a lot. Like, I don't know. Like you said, it's it's the breadcrumbs of everything. You know, if you, mm -hmm. it's hard to always like, you know, I guess uh, say it directly what it is, but it's just like, I just know that that's Wes Anderson, even though it's not fully yeah. fleshed out. Like I know that it's there, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it really is like, this is just a really fun movie uh, in general. And so, uh, the dialogue, yeah. I think, is also very Wes Anderson. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. Which is like, you know, it's it's very it's it's not really, you know, we talked about in the last episode. It's not really like realistic dialogue, but it still feels like real in a way. Yeah, emotionally. Yeah, it's it's that uh, it's that it feels in the in the movie making. It's like he makes it so, you know, you're watching a movie. Yeah. Um, but the emotion of it all is authentic. Um, and the Definitely. characters are authentic. Um, yeah. Um, and like we, we'll probably talk about next week with Rushmore that is even more emphasized. So we'll probably get into that theme a little bit, uh, when we talk about that movie. Uh, but it, you yeah. do, like you said, already see kind of the breadcrumbs of that here with bottle rocket. Um, and you know, you mentioned the, the slow-mo man, like, that scene at the very end with, uh, which by the way, um, I don't think I mentioned this, but this is a spoiler podcast. You're supposed yeah. to watch the movie and then listen to the episode or, you know, maybe you, maybe you want to hear us analyze it and then watch it. That's fine too. It's you do what you want to do, but just know that we are going to talk about the whole movie. Um, yeah. So if we already spoiled something, you know, sorry. Um, but <laughs> I'm not going to say that every episode just. Yeah. Just I mean, this know. movie is almost 30 <laughs> years old. So like, yeah, you know, you, sh you, you should see it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. So that scene at the end with uh, Dignan that it's, you know, the very end of the movie, you get that first like slow-mo um, with the, you know, the soundtrack going. Um, uh, and it's, he always does those slow-mo moments to like really, emphasize or highlight like the emotion of the moment uh is one thing that i love about it and it it really 100%. it works like gangbusters for me that scene um like it like it hits me like i didn't like cry or anything but i like felt it like yeah deeply. No, for sure um you can kind of see in that slow like that slow mo like dignan turning back and looking you see this look in his eye and we'll we'll kind of get into the themes um of like I have kind of my own idea of what's going on in that moment. Uh, I'll yeah. share that in a minute though. But yeah. And then you get just all these little quirky kind of, you know, I, I, I'm not sure Wes Anderson likes the, the idea of his films being quirky, but there are sure. quirks to it. Um, you had mentioned the little book where like it's, they're robbing a, like a bookstore or a library or something like it's yeah. I think it's a bookstore. Yeah. And so they're, uh, they're robbing it. And Anthony's like looking for one of the other workers, like with his little mask on and everything. And, uh, he just like randomly grabs a book and he opens it up and it's like, a about World War II planes. And it kind of like, you just get a frame of him walking with that book, like, <laughs> and like re you're like 
scanning the page with him. Like, why is he doing that? Who knows? But, but actually, so in the theatrical version, it was a different book. Like the, the studio okay. was like that. This doesn't make any sense. Why is it the world war two plane book? Um, and so they made them change it and they changed it to like, it was kind of like a, um, I don't know, kind of like a self-help book or something. And it had something to do with like, here's some ways you can like grow or something. They were like, Oh, that makes more sense, you know, for, but like really like, so they added that back. So on HBO max, was it the criterion version of the movie? Um, a lot of times on HBO max, like they'll have like at the beginning, the criterion little C. I, don't, I can't remember, remember if it was or not. Okay. So it, it must, it was that version. If that's what you, did you see the world war two plane? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, so they added it back in yeah. when they did the okay. Criterion restoration. They added that back in instead of the other book uh, because that's, that's awesome. what Wes wanted. And um, because he was like, I just think that's what that character would have grabbed. You know, yeah, uh, he would have grabbed this random World War II book like a kid. Like it's like a book that a kid would like think is cool, you know, and yeah. Anthony kind of has that childlike kind of mind like and way of Definitely. thinking. Yeah. So I I love that. Um, it's those like little character details that, you know, and that's why I say this isn't, this movie isn't really full on Wes Anderson because of those like studio choices that you get. Right. Um, yeah, but yeah. Um, I think, um, yeah, that kind of going off of that idea of like Anthony being childlike, you kind of get, this like heavy theme of characters in a kind of arrested development. Like right. they are kind of stuck. They're adults, but they're stuck in this like childlike mindset yeah. um, or, or way of thinking or way of life. Um, I don't know. Did, did you kind of get a, a, the, the heavy vibes of that? Oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> so like my whole, like, I guess read on the movie um, like just kind of how I felt because you know we talked about in the last episode all of the characters and everything is based on like just people they slash Wes Anderson knew mm -hmm. and I feel like this kind of movie it feels like any sort of like childhood friendship like everyone probably had a friend like Dignan at some point in their life mm -hmm. where it's just like all right man like you you go and I'm just gonna follow along and and do whatever you say, but like Dignan's like super, I, I think you can tell he's like trying to prove himself. He's like, it's a yeah. little insecure with, with everything. And, a uh, overzealous. Yeah, exactly. And, and like just some of the ways that like all these plans are like drawn up and imagined, like it, it just feels like kids talking, imagining mm -hmm. how they're going to, to figure out how they're going to play together. You know what I mean? Like all those plans yeah. and things like that, like that's got the that's seven really year how plan. It feels. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like just just different things where it's like, man, it just feels like kids like planning out their future type of a thing. And uh and it's so funny like with with every, like Dignan, I like I again, I feel like everyone knows a Dignan in their life and he's one of my favorite characters Wes has uh Wes has ever put on film. Yeah. Yeah, you were telling me right after you watched it that he might be one of your just like all-time favorite characters in general. Now, yeah, I mean he is he's movie. incredible and so realistic. Like seriously, I feel like I feel like I know I've known several Dignans in my life. Yeah. Maybe not to the and crime it, perspective, but just like in general <laughs> with their lives and stuff like that. Yeah, they get this like kind of giddy like child excitement about like what they want to do or like this idea that like is never going to work, but they're just so excited yeah. you can't tell them no. Uh you can't, you're like you can't like take them aside and be like, hey, this isn't gonna work. You know, you, you gotta move on. Instead, you're just like, okay, let's let's you know, let's do it. Why not? You're so yeah. excited about it. Let's go for it. <laughs> yeah. And early in the movie, after they buy the weapons, like Bob, I think, is like trying to like touch the gun and Dignan is like, like, no, you can't touch my gun. Like, stop. Like it's just a very like yeah. <laughs> kitty interaction of like, no, don't touch my stuff. You can't play with my stuff. Right. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I bought it. I bought it. It was my money. Yeah. <laughs> great. Fantastic. And it's, and they were, they were, they were like friends and roommates. All of those yeah. guys. Uh, they were like living together in that apartment in Dallas. Like um, it's funny. Uh, Bob, um, 
uh, his, I'm trying to think of his last name in real life. I just, it's not coming to me. Um, but the guy that plays, um, plays him in the movie, uh, he, um, he was like auditioning. So they just like kind of gathered together some people they knew to like audition for these parts. And yeah. They were going to give it to him. Uh, and he just like, didn't really audition well for the part. And then this other guy auditions that they knew, um, like they weren't as good friends with him, but like, and then he like did really well with the, his audition, but they, they didn't do it the normal way you're supposed to do auditions, which is like bring in one person at a time. Like, Bob was still there, <laughs> like seeing this other guy, like destroy his audition and yeah. his was so bad. And he like convinced them. He's like, let me try it again. And like, so he auditioned again. And like, after seeing that guy and was actually, Wes was like, oh, well now he's, now it seems like he's perfect for it. <laughs> so it, it you awesome. know, it worked out, but yeah, they were just friends. Like, hanging out deciding to yeah. make a movie and then they were all they acted in it um you know uh, yeah and owen wasn't supposed to be in the movie i don't think initially i don't remember i don't maybe i don't know i didn't see i don't remember seeing that yeah uh, i thought i because i think he was like like this is like his debut i mean it's mm -hmm. pretty much all their debuts but yeah. uh i think if i remember correctly like he was just like sticking with the writing and they, uh, I guess, I don't, I don't know the full story, but I just think I, I saw a blurb that like he wasn't supposed to be in initially. Um, so I don't know how he got convinced, but, uh, but man, I'm really glad he did. Cause like, he's yeah, probably by necessity. It's like, if we only have so many friends, like somebody has got to do this part. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it launched his career for sure. Like, um, which, you know, Owen Wilson, I mean, he hasn't had like, an accolades career like no but like leo but he's had a great career um absolutely and you know i think he's a, a good actor um yeah and uh yeah it's just just that that camaraderie between these guys like comes across in the movie um you know at one point even um i remember wes saying like Cause it, someone was asking about like where the tone for this movie came and he's mm -hmm. like, well, it's, it's, it's there. Like the kind of like, uh, seeds of it are there in the script, but really like it's the, it's the acting that brings out the tone. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, even, uh, it's, it's funny. There's a, if you, you can find an interview with, uh, Robert Yeoman, who's the, um, the DP, or cinematographer and he um he talks about how he was talking to Wes he was like yeah you know they were talking about him coming and doing the movie and he was like so you know who are you having in it and he's just like you know these guys and he's like oh he was like taken aback <laughs> that like he wasn't like gonna get a real actor in the movie and right. he was just kind of like oh um okay you know kind of I guess thinking in the back of his head well we'll see how this goes you know yeah for real um yeah and really like i think because uh they are just like friends acting in this movie as characters who are friends like that humanity um of the characters really like comes across so yeah. well um you know uh i was one of the standout scenes to me was um it's that scene where they're at the gas station and Dignan is, uh, you know, telling them about, uh, the, um, the long crew and Anthony's yeah. like kind of upset about it. And, uh, he's like, no, you know, it's a front or whatever. And then, uh, Anthony's like, well, why aren't you with them now? And Dignan says, cause I got fired. Um, <laughs> and it's like, it's like, it's, it's funny, but also like the way Wes like moves the camera in, on yeah. on Owen as Dignan and like he kind of like talks about his like you know being really like it's it's like that child like this child had a big dream but he yeah. kind of like he and he and he knew he could do it but he kind of messed up a little bit and lost the the chance to to you know do what he wanted to do exactly, like you, yeah. you you hear that in in o the way that 
Owen delivers that line as Dignan. And then you get that cut back to Anthony and you can see like, there's not a lot going on in his expression, but there's enough where you can see like the kind of dawn of realization. Like I can't be angry at my friend. Like, yeah, he, like he needs me. Like he's, he's not just being like foolish. Like he's, he's trying to like heal. He's trying to figure out what he wants to do. Um, yeah. Uh, and and he needs me to be here here for him and that like that came across to me like so heavily in that scene and um yeah that just that humanity and that like bond um that you get uh from these characters is just so good yeah no doubt i mean there's there's so many moments like that too where anthony is just kind of like he's having he's basically having a baby dignan uh Cause he doesn't want to hurt his feelings. You know what I mean? He like, he doesn't want to like, he he's fine with telling him no in some circumstances, but then there's others where, you know, he's just like, like that moment, especially where he's, and then uh, right before the, the big heist where he's kind of like, all right, I kind of have to like say yes. So I don't, you know, I don't want to lose my friend here, you know, or, yeah. or really stomp on him and his dreams. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's, and they really are like, they're like kids that like, aren't sure where they're headed, but they right. have like big dreams and they have big yeah. aspirations. And, uh, you know, Wes, uh, in an interview, uh, he kind of talks about, um, these characters, you know, you think about like, if this was someone in your life, like how, you know, I was trying to put myself in the shoes of, okay, if this was a real person that I knew that was kind of this way. I would probably have a tendency to kind of look down on them and just like kind of, you know, look down my nose at them and think like, you know, man, get your stuff together. Like you're such <laughs> yeah. a slacker kind of thing. Like, um, but Wes, the Wes is in Wes's mind. They aren't slackers. He said, they're not slackers. Um, uh, I wrote down this quote. They're not slackers. They're always trying to find a way out. Um, and it is, it's like, um, it's like that idea of being a kid and, you know, everyone thinks you're nothing and you're not important, but really like, you're just doing your best to like, find a way to yeah. be something. Um, and I think that, I think that does come across in the movie, you know, um, with, with these guys, it, you, you, you want us think like, man, they really need to get their stuff together. But at the same time, like they're kind of like doing their best. They're giving it their yeah. best go. Even if it's like kind of a comical thing that they're giving their best go at, which is you right. know, robbery. Crime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I think, you know, if if you look at it again, from the perspective and knowing Wes of like, Hey, it's the childlike perspective that we're viewing these characters as like, like you said, it's, it would be easy if you don't know any of that to be like, why, why are, why am I supposed to be rooting for any of these guys? Like they just seem mm -hmm. like losers uh, and things like that. But if you, if you view it from that childlike perspective, you see, like you said, they're just trying their best. They're like, they're just big kids with imaginations, you know? Mm -hmm. And just like we wouldn't necessarily like, you wouldn't look at an eight year old and be like, you gotta get your life together, man. Like, come on, you gotta, yeah. you gotta step <laughs> up. Like, you want to be an astronaut, you know, that's not realistic. You know what I mean? Like you don't, you don't tell right. kids that. And, and that's the way that they kind of interact and, and, and act in this movie is that they're just like, man, yeah. I want to be, I want to be a robber. <laughs> I want to be a person that does scores, you know, and, and mm -hmm. heists. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, West doesn't look down on them. I think is a big right. thing. Like you can tell Wes is not, Wes doesn't see himself as the writer and director as like better than these characters. Right. Um, and because I, I think that really characters. comes across, right. You know, it's, it's him and it's people he knows and it's um, these ideas about uh, life and, you know, trying to do something. And I think that brings me to um, just something that like came across to me as I finished the movie. And I was just thinking about like, just thinking about the making of this film, like these guys um, making this movie, like getting, you know, Wes, especially getting to do something that like he had wanted to do since he was a kid. Yeah. Um, and like thinking about like, what was it that made them keep going 
like um, amidst all of like the stuff that was against them, like the odds were stacked against them, like so heavily, uh, but he kept going um, and he found ways like to like, you know, finding that one card that said something positive in the screenings, like yeah. finding ways like to keep going. Um, and I think that comes across in these characters. Um, he mentioned uh, him in, in, in the Wes Anderson collection, the interview with them, they, they talk about, uh, uh, Godard, uh, Godard. I'm terrible at pronouncing French names sometimes. <laughs> um, but, uh, he has this quote where he says, every film is a documentary of its actors. Um, and I think I, to me, it just feels like bottle rocket captures where, what these guys were experiencing, like in that moment in their lives. Um, you know, they were, they were getting to do this thing that people would say, like, you can't do that for a career. Uh, like Dignan and Anthony are like robbing, <laughs> trying to make a, a career of robbery. It's like, you can't do that for a career, but like, no, that's a silly thing. Uh, and like obvious, but like they wanted to write and direct movies. And like, you think about like when you're sharing dreams and aspirations with like family and friends and they're like, you know, that's cute, but you know, you can't make a career of doing that. Right. You know, you, you need to find something more stable and consistent. You know, you, you hear those sorts of things. And I think that parallel is, is very strong between these characters in the movie and what was happening in their lives. Like we're getting to actually do um, this thing that we love, that we want to do, that excites us. Um, yeah. That gives us a reason to like get up in the morning. Um, and yeah, it, it's just, and I think that's why that last scene to me just like speaks volumes because I, you know, they're fine. They're visiting Dignan in jail and, uh, you know, they're taught, they're just talking and laughing about, you know, everything that happened to them kind of looking back on it. Like, man, we did that. Like it, it was, it, it kind of sucked and like, <laughs> it didn't really work how we wanted it to, but we did it. Um, and you know, I'm thinking about just thinking about like Wes and Owen and all of those guys doing the same thing. Like, the the screenings were terrible. We made no money, but we did it. Like we did the yeah. thing that we wanted to do. Um, and when Dignan looks back at them, you can just see in his eyes and what I saw in his, in his eyes was in that, that emotional slow-mo um, was just the idea of if you go down doing the thing that you love, like doing the thing that gives you life, at least you got to do the thing that you love. Yeah. Um, and man, I love that idea. Um, you know, go for it. Go do the thing that you love. Do the thing that gives you life. Because even if you go down doing it, you got to do that thing. And you got yeah, to exactly. feel alive. And you got to do what you loved. Yeah. Um, I just love that. Did you have any um, any thoughts? Any more thoughts about just kind of what's going on? Um, with that parallel in their lives. Yeah, no, I, I think it, it's, it's a hundred percent like that idea of the, you know, don't, don't live a life with regrets, you know, don't, don't do something that you'll look back on and, and think, man, I, for, I regret that I didn't ever do that when I had the chance to, um, yeah. and these guys, you know, are fresh out of college and, and getting the opportunity to, to make a movie. Um, and they've had to, I mean, even uproot their lives. I mean, they spent, uh, we talked about in the last episode, they, they spent a year in Hollywood rewriting the script and things like that. And mm -hmm. you, know, you think about the time that they're in, like it's, it's the only time that they're really flexible enough to be able to, to do something like that. You know, it was, it was a now or never type thing for them. And I, I think Dignan right. kind of has that view of, Hey, it's now or never for us if we, if we do this. Um, and so, yeah, you know, obviously it leads to Dignan being imprisoned, but, um, you know, it's, it's a fun story for them to, to look back on and, you know, who knows how any of these characters ended up, but yeah, you know, you'd like to think that maybe they learned from it and did do something, uh, hopefully more stable after that. Uh, yeah. but yeah. 
Yeah, I'd li- I like to imagine, you know, it opens up with um, Anthony uh, fake escaping from uh, kind of like a, uh, I don't know what you would call it, like a psychiatric hospital, maybe. Um, yeah, and it was weird because he said it was it was voluntary that he went. Yeah, he so. went there. Um, and you kind of get hints at why he was there throughout the film. Right. Like, um, he just, it, you know, it makes sense. Like he, he's kind of in a rut. He doesn't know what to do with his life and he kind of has, I guess, a breakdown of sorts and decides he needs to go to this, um, this like psychiatric hospital and check himself in totally voluntarily. Um, Yeah. yeah, that, that opening scene is funny. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I like to think at the end of the movie, like he's kind of matured and grown and like is healthier now. Like yeah. may, he might not ever have a life of robbery like he thought was exciting, but like he's in a healthier, like s- a more mature place because, um, because he did, because he did what he wanted to do. Like he did what yeah was exciting to him. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I like to think Anthony, you know, won't ever have to check himself back in to the psychiatric yeah. hospital again, you know, at the end yeah. of the movie. Um, and I will say, I know Wes doesn't do like sequels or anything, but mm-hmm. I would love like a Wes Anderson directed movie just based on Anthony being a, a children's soccer coach. That <laughs> would just be absolutely hilarious uh yeah. like that whole that whole sequence is awesome and and i i love that just quick moment of, of him being a soccer coach i'm like i can't imagine how this would go in <laughs> in, in real life you know so i'd love to yeah. see that like fully fleshed out yeah i you know i imagine he's probably a better soccer coach than will ferrell in kicking and screaming so right <laughs> uh so he probably has that going for him i don't know if that's saying much but um but yeah it's not know. but <laughs> uh yeah you know i don't i don't think i have anything else um you know uh there are some like i guess technical elements that aren't as strong here but that we didn't really touch on like the production design isn't quite as like strong here you don't get the the sets and the backgrounds that you'll you'll start seeing with rushmore yeah Um, it's not as colorful either yeah, it's not as colorful. You do still kind of have some like colors attached here and there to to characters, um, but uh, yeah, it, you you already have the you do already have the music and the soundtrack. Um, yeah, kind of that's very West. But as far as like the colors and the production design, it's funny because you don't get that here, and I wonder how much of that was because of maybe their budget or just yeah. like the studio like kind of like tying their hands because you go, you go from this to Rushmore and it's like Rushmore is like, it's like going from like zero to a hundred as no, far definitely. as that stuff goes. So, yeah. and um, then you go to Royal Tenenbaums and it's like to a million. <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Um, so I, you know, I uh, rated this movie. I have, um, my little notebook like ha- kind of has where you can kind of rate each element of it. Um, yeah, I, there were some, there were some parts of this that I thought were like a little bit weaker as far as that goes, like, like the set design and like the, yeah. um, you know, the editing, his editing isn't quite fully formed, but you see Definitely. the potential for it sort of thing. Uh, the sound design, um, you know, just some elements like that. Um, aren't fully formed, but man, this is still like a, a eight out of 10 for me. Um, I, you know, I love, I, this movie I liked more than the first time I saw it for sure. Watching it this time yeah. around. And maybe that's, maybe it's just because like I'm putting so much thought and work into like researching it and like sure thinking about it that like, it makes my love grow for it. But yeah, it's, it's an eight out of 10 for me. Um, four and a half, four stars out of five. Uh, what, what did you give uh bottle rocket Jacob? Yeah, I gave it, uh, I gave it four net, uh, four out of five stars as well. Um, I think it's just, like I said earlier, it's a really fun movie. 
Um, mm-hmm. I definitely think that like it's choppy at times, which again, it's it's the fir- their first movie, so like that makes sense. Mm-hmm. It drags at times. You you know he gets the pacing down much better um, as he goes along. Um, and I did feel like it felt longer than it actually is. Uh, and that's just, you know, some of the pacing stuff. Um, but the dialogue is, is fantastic even for his first movie. Um, and I really, I mean, like whenever, you know, we were doing the research, uh, and talking about all this, like the fact that this is like Owen Wilson's debut and that he had like no formal training is Mm -hmm. like amazing because he's throwing like a hundred miles per hour in this, in this movie. Like he is just awesome and and i mean i i think bob's really like the only like weak part for me sure like watching it um but luke and owen are are great uh yeah luke is great and man i don't know how he it it arguably has the best romance between anthony and inez like we didn't touch on that but like man when he makes that phone call and she says that she loves him too man i was like beaming I was so happy for him. Like, (laughs) and I don't know if you get that in any other Wes Anderson movie, like that sort of like, just like, I'm so happy that they're together kind of feeling. Right. Uh, But yeah, we didn't really touch on that, but yeah, that's in there too. So, you know, that's a point for bottle rocket for sure. Best romance in a a Wes Anderson movie. Yeah. And that, and that (laughs) sequence where the, uh, I forget what the other, hotel worker's name is but the one that's basically the translator yeah and he yeah. tells dignan i love you yeah or, or tell uh tell anthony i love him and he's like well yeah, he doesn't say why. that he doesn't say tell anthony he's just translating okay. that's so right he that's just right. says uh like dignan turns around and he says i love you yeah Dignan's and he's like, like what the heck what? like what's going he's on like tell, tell anthony i love i love you it's like okay <laughs> <laughs> all right man <laughs> Oh, that's great. Was he translating or was he saying it? What do you mean? <laughs> there's there's so many good It's like no concept of like translation that. for, yeah. for Dignan. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But yeah, so um yeah, so two eight out of tens for Bottle Rocket for us. Definitely. Um yeah, I, you know, this is a great great intro to Wes Anderson's movies for sure. And so, um, yeah, so, uh, I hope, uh, everyone will stick around. Um, obviously we're going to hit up Rushmore next week, but also before that, we're going to go for a quick break. And did you have something? Yeah, I got one question. Okay. Um, would you say like for someone now, like if they were getting into Wes Anderson, would you throw them bottle rocket first or would you recommend something else? You know, that's a good question. Um, I think I don't think I would start with Bottle Rocket. I don't if think it I would was either. just if it was just like um let's let's start let's start someone off cold with Wes Anderson. You know, they're not listening to this podcast sort of thing. Um Yeah. Uh I would say I would say either start off with like Mr. Fox um uh because it's it's a little less like it's it i guess it like makes that kind of like wit and yeah um preciseness and kind of like dryness and uh it makes it more palpable because it's animated right um, and the fantasticalness of it is yeah. is like more palpable like yeah. you said once you cuz it's animated and it's because it's right. you know talking animals yeah so i would say probably start off with either like mr fox or Maybe even, um, you know, Royal Tenenbaums is like, he's, he's kind of getting fully formed there, but I think it's just, it's a good introduction to him. Um, I would say, I, I would want to say, I want to say Grand Budapest, but that might be a bit much too. Um, yeah, but I would say probably Mr. Fox or Royal Tenenbaums. So yeah, I would now like, now if it's someone that's already like really into film and hasn't just hasn't happened like watched any Wes Anderson before um, just because they haven't gotten around to it. Um, You know, just like the idea of like, I'm, I want to watch Wes Anderson movies now and I'm going to watch them in order. Like, I think it's fine because that sort of person is going to be like kind of looking for these things we're talking about already. Like, okay, let me see what this director does first. So I can like see kind of how he progresses as he, continues to make movies yeah um, for sure yeah so 
Yeah, that was a really good question. Um, I'm glad you interrupted me. Uh, <laughs> Sorry to ask. <laughs> yeah, I don't, did you have a one that you would recommend first, other than those two? Yeah, fant- I mean, Fantastic Mr. Fox. That's the first one I watched, um, mm-hmm. and so I would I would definitely agree um, that that would be probably the best, just because yeah. you kind of get kind of get the full scope of it while also like being in an animated movie. Like mm-hmm. with the, you know, we talked about a lot on the last episode, how fantastical and, you know, sort of, I guess, unrealistic some of the stuff he does is. So like it, it makes more sense in that sort of a movie. So then once you go to the live action, you see that, especially in yeah. Royal Tenet Moms, you're like, oh, okay. So this is, that's kind of how it's going to be. You know, the the world yeah. that he builds is, uh, is going to be a different world, essentially. Yeah. Moonrise Kingdom might be a good one too. That's the one that, that I'm most removed from, from when I first saw it. So, um, I don't have like a great memory of it. Sure. Uh, looking forward to that, but, um, just like, uh, the idea that the main, like the main, main characters are kids, uh, Mm -hmm. might make that sort of, um, just Wes Anderson style make more sense. Sure. uh, in the way that it's made because it's kids, um, as the main characters, um, and I think too, like if you are want to introduce like your kids to Wes Anderson, I think probably Mr. Fox and Moonrise Kingdom are, are yeah. good ones. Um, kids tend to, kids tend to want to like know, um, or they're very interested in kids that are a little bit older than them. Yeah. Um, just kind of that, it, that's kind of how kids like think, like they're enamored by kids like two years older than them. And yeah. so like, um, I can't remember how old the kids are in Moonrise Kingdom, but I would imagine like, if you have like a 12 year old really into movies, then like, you know, showing them Moonrise Kingdom would, would like capture them because the main characters are like kids, maybe a little bit older than they are sort of thing. Sure. So that might be a good one too. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah. Great question. We are, uh, yeah, we'll do Rushmore next week. Uh, so hope you come back for that, but, oh yeah, uh, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back with some, uh, movie news talk and, uh, a really fun movie draft for this week. So, uh, stick around and we will be back in just a bit. Hey everyone. Thank you for joining us on the establishing shot today. We hope you're enjoying the episode so far and we hope you'll stick around for the segments we have coming up after this quick break. But uh, during this break, I wanted to tell you how you can get more involved with the establishing shot podcast. There are several ways you can do this. The main way you can do it is by going to establishingshotpod.com, our website where you can find all sorts of information like uh, episodes with the show notes on there, uh, information about our guests for each episode. You can find uh, reviews there. Uh, and, uh, there's a page where you can actually leave a review on the website. If you want to, you can see all the platforms where the podcast is available, like Apple, Spotify, all the major podcast platforms, and even uh, a link to our YouTube page where you can see a video version of the podcast. So, uh, please go to the website and, uh, the place I want to highlight there is our donate page, uh, which has information about our establishing shot family. This is a way that you can subscribe to the podcast to support all the efforts and uh, the just the stuff that goes into making this podcast good and making it better than it even is now. We have different tiers that you can subscribe to uh, starting at $5. And what this will do is you'll be able to support the podcast, help me make it better. And also at the same time, you'll get early and ad-free episodes. You'll get access to our Discord server where you can join in and just kind of talking about movies with a community that loves uh, film. And so we, we would love to have you in there. Uh, and then the higher up in the tiers you go, the more you get. Uh, even things like uh, chats and video chats that we'll do uh, every once in a while where we get to talk about uh, in more detail stuff that we're talking about on the podcast. So I hope you'll subscribe to that. Uh, Choose a tier that fits uh, your budget. And uh, I would love for you to support the podcast in that way. And uh, 
the last thing I wanted to talk about uh, is where you can find us on social media. Uh, you can find me personally on Twitter at the Eli Price, and you can also follow me on Letterbox. Letterbox is kind of like a social media for movie reviews. So you can read my reviews there and you can find me there at just Eli Price, you know, no, no spaces or anything. Uh, so I'm on Twitter and Letterbox. You can find the podcast on all the uh, social pl- platforms as well, such as Twitter at eShot Pod and then on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok at Establishing Shot Pod. So make sure to follow us so you don't miss anything. If you have a uh, any questions or comments about the episode or about the podcast, you can always email us at establishingshotpod at gmail.com. And the very last thing I want to do before you get back into the episode today is just ask you to please go to Spotify and Apple and leave some ratings and reviews. That really helps the visibility of the podcast and gets it in more people's podcast feeds. And so... We hope you will do that for us, and we would greatly appreciate it. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode, and I will see you next time on the Establishing Shot podcast. Before we get back into the content of today's show, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to some of the recent reviews uh, that have been left to the show. There have been uh, a few, one by uh, Birdie underscore Bell, one by... My name is Falsta, and one by Justice the Beaver. Thank you so much for your reviews on Apple Podcasts. It really helps the show out. And uh, just a quick shout out to a couple of my new supporters on Supercast. Uh, If you don't support the show, you can find out how to do that at establishingshotpod.com slash support. Uh, But yeah, I have two supporters, uh, Shannon Burge and Renee Hayes. A uh, big shout out to y'all. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Okay, back to the show. Welcome back. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the first segment on Bottle Rocket uh, today. Um, but yeah, me and Jacob are uh, are here and we're going to do some uh, movie news for our movie news segment. Um you know, eventually I'll probably find a little clip to throw in, uh, throw in the soundboard with a little, like a, uh, so I'll just do it myself this time. There you uh, go. yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, movie news. Uh, so really we're just going to talk about one thing, uh, today and that is summer movies, uh, summer movies, you know, uh, they used to be like June and July. Yeah. And then Spider-Man came out and it changed the game. Um, and some summer movies now start in May. So, uh, summer, when you talk about summer movies, uh, in the world of film, uh, basically you're talking about movies from the beginning of May to kind of like early August. Um, and you know, you get a lot of really fun movies that come out in the summer. They're not necessarily like awards movies. Definitely not. <laughs> uh, sometimes they are, but sometimes. usually they're not. Um, they're, they're just, but they're more just like blockbusters or like, uh, you know, sequels or just fun, just fun movies. You know, there's always at least one Marvel movie for sure. At least one. Um, and yeah, that that actually is the first one on the list. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy three coming out May fifth. Uh, yeah, um, I, me and Jacob are kind of like uh, on different like Marvel teams. Uh, Jacob it's is fair. still like Jacob's still like all in on like the MCU for the most part. Yeah, you know, you're realistic about it. I'll I'll say that. Yeah. You're realist you're realistic about it. You're not just like I love it no matter what sort of thing, yeah, but um definitely. But definitely on a different spectrum different point <laughs> of the spectrum than me who like I'm just like I am tired of these. Um I would you know, I I've enjoyed a lot of them. Uh but honestly would be totally fine if they never made another one. Like I wouldn't be sad about it. Um so, yeah, but uh, I, you know, I enjoy 
I enjoy them when they're made well. There's yeah, and I actually have enjoyed um, like I've enjoyed several of the the what phase are we in? I don't see this as part of it. Phase I, four. I don't. I don't know. I don't really care what. I don't care about. Like, why do we have to talk about what phase we're in? I don't. Yeah. Anyways, I actually have enjoyed some of the most recent ones, like uh, like Thor: Love and Thunder, and um, multi, uh, Multiverse of Madness. Um, yeah. I actually, kind of appreciated those because they were kind of two movies made by like good directors, yeah. um, and they were like they they were like unabashedly what they were, like. Thor Love and Thunder was just like full on like goofy comedy. Uh, and then like, I wouldn't say multitude multiverse of madness was like full on Sam Raimi, but it yeah. was, it had parts that were close. And I, I just no, appreciated definitely. that about them. You know, they uh, Marvel kind of, they, there were still elements that were very Marvel that I didn't like, uh, but they sure. took the finger, the, the like the MCU finger off a little bit and let the directors kind of make the movies, I guess, how they wanted to, yeah. to a small degree, I guess. And so sure. I appreciated that. Uh, but yeah, are you excited about Guardians Volume 3? I am. Um, okay. I think that I, it looks like, it seems like, uh, from the trailers and how they're marketing it that like, they're definitely that there's actually some stakes and that they're actually going to like probably kill off some main characters. Um, yeah. which I think that, I mean, just like not without being morbid, like I think Marvel does need to do that because I mean, not every, you know, the, and my, my biggest issue with all the Marvel stuff is that like not every movie has to be about like the world ending, you yeah, know what I mean? Sure. Like, you know, there's there. And I think that they kind of hit on this in some of the shows while all the shows aren't like particularly great. There's some low stakes stuff that happens in the shows that is making it realistic or at least making it like mm -hmm. not trying to build this like false tension of like, Oh, okay. Well, I know the world's not going to end. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but if you actually yeah, are that's, like uh... killing off characters, you know, I think that that's like, that's an actual emotional component especially with the guardians who were like you know probably one of the most popular characters in the mcu yeah yeah definitely like some of the most beloved ones i would say um as far as just like the characters go um but yeah yeah that i've only really watched one mcu show um ever i watched wandavision and that was something that i appreciated about it like yeah it makes it it, it gives like the facade that something huge is going on but when it comes down to it, it's like something very like close and personal going on, um, which. Yeah, you know, I, was awesome. Yeah, I, I really liked that show and appreciated that element of it um, and thought they did it really well. But yeah, you're right. For, for a lot of the movies, they really like they'll give you like hints of that. But then they like get back to like that's the one reason that I feel like like Shang-Chi like really. Man, they were so close to getting it right just yeah. like perfect with his like relationship with his dad and like um but instead of like making that the climax it's a big cgi monster um, that's like if it's released scene. into the world it's gonna destroy yeah. everything you know and it's just like man could you not just like for once let it be something <laughs> like very like close and personal and like yeah relatable uh, and that's like the thing of like with iron man that makes it work so well is that it is like, it's just a guy like sh having struggles with like his company. Now, obviously like it could lead to, to wars cause he worked for a, a company that made weapons, but right. you know, it's the end, the climax, the climactic moments are not, you know, about Iron Man saving the world. It's just about him fighting his, uh, his right hand man. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm not like excited about guardians three just because I do have MCU fatigue. Like, sure. Uh, but I'm not like uninterested in it. I am interested to see like what the stakes are, like what, mm -hmm. you know, what does happen here? Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. You know, MCU is just, it always just, 
it's one of those things that I'm like, ah, oh, here we go. Let's talk about it. <laughs> it is interesting. Um, yeah, we have, uh, this is something that I am like completely uninterested in, which is fast 10. Uh, Me too. How many, how many fast and furious movies have you seen, Jacob? Big zero. Zero. A, a big fat goose egg. Okay. And I, I do not intend on watching them. One of my, one of my close friends that uh, <laughs> I do camp with is like, the biggest fast and furious fan. And I just constantly have to argue with them about it because yeah. I just, I don't like them and I don't, I'm sure some of them are, are quote unquote good for, you know, action movies or whatever, but I, I don't know. I they don't, are. I don't like Vin <laughs> Diesel. I don't think he's a particularly good actor. <laughs> and I just, you know, I, I have fast and furious fatigue, even though I haven't seen any of them. So <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. Also, seen if a you few. watch the trailer, if you watch the trailer, Jason Momo, who I do respect, is like just doing some like weird, like he's dressed like Fabio with like his outfit and his hair, and he just seems to be like chuckling and like laughing the <laughs> entire time. And it's just, I'm like, what are they doing here? Like, what is yeah. this? Yeah, I've anyway. seen a few, but I have no interest. Like, I saw, I'm pretty sure I saw the first one. I've definitely seen Tokyo Drift. Sure. And then I think. I don't think I saw any until like, I don't know, seven or eight. I went with like a <laughs> friend of mine that like loves them. And I was like, yeah, I'll go with you and like hated it. Uh, but like, I couldn't say that I hated it because he was so excited. I was just like, yeah. he was like, wasn't that great? And I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it was the one where they drive the car like out of the window of one skyscraper into the window of another one, whatever that one is. Um, if yeah. you're listening and you love these movies, just, you can tell me which one it was that I saw. Um, yeah. And you can tell us like why we're so wrong on the fast movies. Please and, do. You know, yeah, please tell us why we're wrong. Um, we'll probably tell you back that you're wrong, but at least we'll have <laughs> a fun conversation. Uh, yeah, you got um, that's uh, May 19th, May 26th. You've got The Little Mermaid, which I'm kind of of the opinion, like why do a live action remake when you can just go watch sure. the better original, but, uh, I'll probably watch it on Disney plus, you know, um, it's a, it's a money grab for sure. Uh, if and, you're uh, listening and not watching Jason, I mean, Jacob did the, the fingers, the money fingers. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not super pumped yeah, about sure it, is. but I'll probably watch it. I, you know, I'll probably honestly will end up going and see it in theaters probably because uh, my wife will. And I'm not opposed to that. Yeah. You know, it'll probably yeah, be no. a fun, fun one to see. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Little Mermaid. Um, and, yeah. And real quick before we move on, um, she does like seem to have an incredible voice. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, no, no doubt. I can't, I can't think of the the girl's name that's playing it is like ha is it Hallie Bailey? It's Hallie something. Hallie it's Hallie Bailey, Bailey because I, every time I hear it, I think right. Hallie Berry, and I'm like, no, not yep. Hallie Berry, Hallie Bailey. Yeah. Um, yeah, she seems to have like an incredible voice, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, uh, June second, this is one like I'm pumped for. Uh, is Spider Man Across the Spider Verse? For um, sure. I think that the first that into the spider verse is the best Spider-Man movie. Um, that's kind of my opinion, uh, but yeah, I'm take. super pumped. Yeah. I don't know if maybe it's a hot take, but it probably honestly, like I bet on Letterboxd, it has the highest rating of all the Spider-Man movies. It might. I yeah. It's, it I mean, it's an incredible animated movie. Um, I typically don't like animated movies too much. I don't, I don't know mm -hmm. what it is. Um, I like most of the Pixar stuff. Um, yeah, but, and I was like, kind of like hesitant. I have, I don't know. I just have weird taste in like animation styles and stuff like that. Um, but I, when I finally got around to watching it, I was like, oh yeah, this is like awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah. They actually like, they were trying to make it, um, the way they wanted it to look with like, like existing kind of like uh, what would you say? Kind of like blueprints, like you kind of yeah. have animation blueprints for lack of, cause I don't know the actual terms. So that's how I'm explaining yeah. it. No, it's uh, okay. <laughs> but they actually like scratched it. They were like, this isn't making it like we want it to look. So they scratched it and started from scratch completely yeah. with like their animation, which 
is like so cool. But yeah, then you've got um, Elemental, which is the next Pixar movie coming out. And I wanted to be excited about it until I saw that it was the same director as The Good Dinosaur, which is like the Yikes. worst Pixar movie. So, I'm shocked they gave him another chance. Yeah, so I'm kind of nervous about it. Um, I'll give it a chance. I give all the Pixars a chance because you get some great ones along the way. Yeah, I mean, most of them are good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, yeah I don't know really anything about it, but... You know, it's Pixar. It's coming out in the summer. I'll probably see it with some right. of my camp friends. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, June 16th. Obviously, you have Asteroid City on June 16th, which yeah. is Wes Anderson's new movie. And we will be covering that at the end of the series. Um, so that'll come out mid-June. We'll probably be ra- wrapping up this miniseries. Um, I don't have the calendar in front of me, but I'm pretty sure it's like mid-july early to mid-july this will be wrapping up so you'll have a whole month to get to the theater to see asteroid city um but it goes without saying that we're excited about wes anderson's new movie um got some new uh some new cast members in there that uh that should be exciting um oh yeah yeah uh yeah so that goes without saying the other one on june 16th is the flash now you're wearing the shirt right now. I am. Uh, Flash is my favorite comic book character. Um, I've read now, like, so I'm not like, I'm not like an ultra like fan, like comic fan, sure. but like I'm kind of more of a casual comic fan. Uh, I've read, uh, I've read a decent, I guess, like a decent amount of Flash comics. Um, uh, there was like a period of my life where like I didn't have much going on. And so I'd like I would go to Barnes and Noble and like pull out a flash graphic novel and just sit yeah. in Barnes and Noble and read it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I you know, he's my favorite. Uh, you know, I'm a DC fan um, in general when it comes to like comics um, and he's my favorite character. But man, it's. I just wish Ezra Miller was not like I I hate to say it, but was not like a creep or a scumbag <laughs> or whatever he is, whatever word yeah. you want to call it. Um, it just like it puts just such a cloud around this movie that like it does it's, it's going to be hard to shake when I when I watch it. I get so when if when I first saw like the stuff coming out about Ezra Miller and then uh you know the studio was like we're you know oh he, we're, here's a release date we're still gonna put it out I was like no you shouldn't do that but then I thought about it and I was like no I guess it makes sense you've you've sunk all this money into this film you that you're done working with this guy like you know you can't really do anything about that at this point yeah you, you know put it out there you know make your make your money back on making this film um but yeah you know i i hope the best for for him you know i hope he goes and yeah, gets no some doubt. help and and you know changes his life um you know i i think that he'll probably end up not not getting the consequences that a normal person would get for sure. for his actions which is yeah. which is sort of unjust um but I do hope for a member you know, of the Justice League, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, I do hope, you know, I'm not a person that's like give someone their due and like throw down the hammer on them. Like I do right. hope he gets like help and changes. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it does put a cloud around this movie. Now, have you heard anything about like, like them re-editing or reshooting anything? Because I don't know if it's just like a, like they're slowly releasing more and more like, you know, you typically see, but like I saw a trailer the other day, um, or maybe it was just like a TV spot or something. And like Ben Affleck was back as Batman. And I was like, I don't remember seeing or hearing about that. Yeah. So I'm wondering if this will be an unfortunate like miss because of like having to re-edit some of the stuff like you know, what kind of happened to the original Justice League movie yeah, because of everything with Ezra or what? It's one of those things. So like, it's not even totally about Ezra, like, cause Ezra's 
like his whole stuff started like after they were done shooting pretty much like oh, okay they were they were in like you know you come on and like tweet at me and tell me like if i've got the details wrong but i'm pretty sure they were already like editing they were like in post production stuff okay. like kind of finishing everything up trying to like edit everything together make their cuts that sort of stuff when all this stuff started coming out so it's kind of like that's what i mean when it's like you know it's not like all this stuff came out and they were like well we got to keep making you know we got to keep yeah, working we, with yeah. this this guy um they were kind of done working with him at that point other than you gotcha. know obviously talking with him about it but um yeah so i you know i it's more the fact that it you know it was supposed to come out i want to say like during covid is mm. that i think the main reason why here we are like in 2023 and it's finally coming out it's just one of those movies that caught got caught in that um that kind of covid pushback yeah. um that makes sense so it's unfortunate but you know hopefully it doesn't suffer the fate of most movies that get pushed back so many times um right i like to be honest i'm probably gonna watch it and like really enjoy it because sure. um based on everything that i've seen about it um i've watched one trailer which i usually try to stay away from but it seems like they're doing like a flashpoint sort of thing with like yeah. an alternate timeline and flashpoint is my favorite flash story. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's an incredibly famous so, one. Yeah. And so it's my favorite one. Um, and it's, it's such a well-written comic, um, mm -hmm. a little comic series. Um, and so, um, I'll probably will like it. Yeah. But it's still just, I don't know. Just that cloud of having this yeah. guy. It's got a, attached like to a it. separate hope, art from the artist. Yeah, you got to do that sometimes. You know, uh, it's just hard sometimes when you're. Oh, it's definitely. easier to do it if it's like a past artist that isn't in the moment. It's harder to do it right. when like you're reading these headlines and then watching the movie with this guy. Sure. But yeah, so, you know, um, I, I'm excited about it. It's just unfortunate circumstances. Um, so, yeah, I hope it's I hope it's a good movie and I hope DC f makes some money on it and, you know, is, you know, gets starts pumping out more good movies because I'm a DC fan. Sure. Uh, but at the same time, I hope like they move on from Ezra Miller um, and maybe make this kind of like a maybe they'll you know, restart flash in the future, but I just don't think you can keep working with this guy after this, you know, you got to move seem on. Like that now. Yeah. But, um, yeah, there's your, uh, Eli spending way too much time talking about the flash, um, segment, <laughs> um, Indiana Jones and the dial of destiny at the end of June. That's exciting. Oh, yeah. I, I still haven't seen the fourth, uh, kingdom of the crystal school. I know you're, um, you like think it's a terrible movie. I I have an open mind about it. Um, sure. So it's not, I don't think all of it is terrible. It's like, yeah. there, there's just a lot the of ending, like, I guess that's what ending, most people talk about. And then there's, there's a lot of like campiness and Shia LaBeouf just honestly just doesn't work in the role. Like I think he's good in a lot of things, but he's just, yeah. it just doesn't work with him. Yeah. Um, and well, so I'm, I'm glad that they're not it, doing so. Yeah, I, and I'm not. I'm glad that they're not doing like an like a young indie or young protege with this. Yeah. Like it seems like it's just gonna be Indiana, which is like perfect. That's what the movies are about. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see what happens with it. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna do like a a reboot of a series like Indiana Jones is one I can get behind. Absolutely. Um, with with Spielberg behind the the wheel, so. Um, and then talking about another series, you got, uh, July 14th, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part One. Oh yeah. So two more, two more Tom Cruise epics, um, At least. with the Mission Impossibles. Yeah. We were kind of talking, uh, in, in the break <laughs> about, um, just I've, how Jacobs watched through a lot of them, uh, recently. And I've, I've seen only the first one a long time ago. So I'll probably do a little little marathon 
for myself leading up to this. Cause I, I do want to see, um, what, what they do with these last two movies. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super yeah. pumped. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the series. Um, and they're also like one of the few really, I mean, maybe the only one that's had like this extended of a run that have like actually like gotten better as they go mm-hmm. along, uh, which yeah. is really cool. And like, I, I think that, you know, you can say what you want about Tom Cruise, but he makes pretty, freaking good action movies uh sure. and and these are all uh, i love most of them uh, i don't like the second one at all um but especially mm-hmm. all the the newish the newer ones they're awesome so yeah yeah that's what i've heard yeah so that that's exciting um and then of course you have on july 21st the the uh you've got the the famous debate double feature of what to see and uh, of course, we know most people are probably going to go with they cloned Tyrone um, <laughs> coming out July 21st, uh, you know, a, kind of a, a opening feature by Jewel Taylor. I don't know if that's how you say his first name, Jewel, Jewel or Jewel Taylor. Um, yeah, starring John Boyega, Tiana Paris and Jamie Foxx uh pretty exciting i know now i understand why so many people are talking about the movies on july 21st absolutely um (laughs) no um i actually do want to see this movie it it sounds interesting Uh, yeah it definitely sounds interesting yeah you, you can go read the description of it but obviously that was a huge uh setup joke um Actually, it's Barbie versus Oppenheimer. You've got yeah. Greta Gerwig's Barbie and Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer both coming out on July 21st, right in time for my birthday. Um, you know, last year I got Nope came out on my birthday, uh, July 23rd. This year I'm getting on my birthday weekend two great movies, and I I'm I'm planning on seeing them both. Oh, the yeah. Same day. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, which one are you going to go see? And theaters, I'm like, it's my birthday. So I'm going to both. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, it'll so, be interesting to see how, like, if in history, these movies, like these two movies get tied together like they have been uh, leading yeah. up to it. They, they've they got to be, you know, I think I think people that are like into movies like. 10 years from now or like still like if these movies come up, they'll be like, Oh, you remember how like Barbie and Oppenheimer came out unless like one of them is just like as a total flop, which I don't see happening. I can't um, see it either. Yeah. Like I think, yeah, I think uh, 10 years from now, we'll maybe we'll still be doing this podcast and might come up and we'll be like, yeah, do you remember, you know, <laughs> they both came out the same day. Yeah. Um, I'm excited about both of these. Obviously Christopher Nolan um is, you know, he's he's one of those guys that like some people like are like they like and then they really get into film and then they kind of like look yeah. down their nose at him. Um you know, I he was kind of part of my intro into becoming like a really into film, but like I don't look down my nose at him. I still really like love a lot of his Oh yeah. pretty much most or all of his movies I, I really enjoy. So I'm excited about Oppenheimer. Um, but yeah, I, I'm excited about, I mean, Greta Gerwig has just been on fire. She's awesome. Yeah. She's, she's great. So I'm excited to see what she does with, with Barbie. Um, yeah. I yeah, mean, Lady so. Bird is, is one of my, like, I think it's in my top 10 currently of like favorite movies. And then little women was like all uh, time. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. uh, and then little women is like, I think my wife said that that's like her favorite movie of all time. So like we're, we're big nice. Greta fans in, in our household. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the, both of those movies are so good. Um, we watched, uh, we watched the lady bird not long ago. Um, Oh, it was on, it was on Valentine's day. We were nice. We were at home and we were like, what, what movies should we watch? You know, (laughs) it's Valentine's day. Let's kick back and watch a movie. And it's like, let's watch lady bird. It's like, yes. It's so good, man. Uh, yeah. Great movie. Um, yeah, I'm excited about Barbie. Um, I really am. It sounds weird, uh, to say, but 
excited about Barbie. Yeah, man. Like, let's go. Um, the last one I had on the list was, uh, it's kind of mid August. You got blue beetle coming out, you know, we'll see. It's, um, we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, it's not as exciting it's a big shrug as flash. for me. <laughs> yeah. Not as exciting as flash to me, but it blue beetle is an interesting character. Um, he kind of has, um, he kind of gives you Spider-Man vibes and, and kind of like the characterization kind of like a kid that's like not really that special sure, uh, per se, but like kind of comes across these powers and has to figure out like what to do with them. Yeah. Um, like what, like what is my responsibility now that I have these powers? Um, so, you know, that's interesting at least. Um, but uh and and then at the same time like i feel like you there's certain like there's certain kind of ethnicities that really just don't get good hollywood representation so it's cool to see yeah, like sure. um you know some hispanic characters like really getting some some screen time and uh in a major you know a major like blockbuster film like this so you yeah. know that's that's something to to say for it for sure no yeah um, for sure yeah, but that's that's all I have as far as like summer movies. If if you have some, uh, if you're listening and you're like, oh, y'all missed this movie, or um, uh, you know, obviously we couldn't get get through everything, but um, yeah, uh, yeah, tweet tweet at us, uh, email us, let us know, um, you know what what movie we missed, um, and uh, yeah, we'll 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 try to respond, um as soon as we can. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm excited about some of these, so it should be a good summer of movies, but, uh, but yeah, now, uh, we're going to, uh, move to the movie draft portion. Uh, if you missed last week, um, I'll give you a quick overview of what this is. Um, basically it's a back and forth choosing You're drafting. It's like drafting your dodgeball team, uh, in the schoolyard, uh, you got to, you're picking, you're picking the best players. Um, so the category we have for today's movie draft is sequels. Uh, so any sequels, um, it doesn't have to be a direct sequel, like the second in the series. Uh, it can be any sequels. Um, it just can't be the first one because the right. first one isn't a sequel by definition. Um, <laughs> totally unnecessary for me to say that other than my like (laughs) odd out there dry sense of humor. Um, but yeah, so we're going to draft sequels. We're going to go back and forth. Uh, let's do it. Uh, yeah, I, I gave Jacob the first pick last week, so I am taking the first pick this week and I'm really in this moment, like in the moment right now, I'm honestly not sure. I like I'm torn. I thought I knew what I was going to do, but now I'm torn because Ooh. I want to, I want to get the best. I want to get the best of the best. Uh, we're drafting seven each and I want to have, I want to have the group of movies that would, that's going to win a poll. Uh, it's understandable. Yeah. I, you know, okay. I'm, I'm going to go with my gut of what I was re- originally going to do. I'm going empire strikes back. Hmm. Uh, you yeah. know, I think it's, it's my fate. I think it's the best star Wars movie. Um, it's, it's just so incredibly good. Such a great movie. Yeah. Um, and so maybe it's a little pandering cause I think, uh, I think the people will like that pick. Um, I think it'll be a fan favorite, but to me, it's, I mean, for me, it's a, it's a five star movie, so yeah. it might be pandering, but it is probably my favorite on my whole list. So yeah. And Empire and Strikes Back, pick number one. Yeah. And it's also, I mean, I think it's really well respected as like one of the best sequels like of all time. Uh, yeah, for sure. I'm going to go with one. Where are you going? That is kind of in the same vein. Like there's a little pandering, mm-hmm. but also this is probably just like my highest rated on there. And I'm going to go with the Dark Knight. Okay. Yeah. Dark Knight. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's in my. It's in my top 10. Uh, For sure. It's one of those movies that like, 
I've seen it so many times that like if it's on TV or if someone's watching or something like I know exactly where I'm at in the movie and mm-hmm. I'm totally fine to sit down and, and be like, Oh, this, this sequence is coming up. I'm, I'm excited for this, you know? Um, yeah, for sure. On my, on my list for sure. Yeah. It, it's one of the best. It's got one of the best villains um, that we've ever seen on screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I mean, he's Heath Ledger as Joker is, is just incredible. Uh, steals the show of, of the for movie. Sure. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a classic. Yeah, definitely. So that's that's actually helpful because now I get to pick the other movie that I was torn between. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going with The Godfather Part Two uh, for my second pick. Um, I think probably The Godfather Part Two is the more like film of my two choices so far, like the sure. film guy choice. Uh, but yeah, and actually, like a lot of. Oh yeah, I saw this recently. Um, Letterbox had tweeted that in their ratings that for the first time ever, Godfather Part Two was rated higher than The Godfather. Dang! Uh, wow. Yes, yeah, it, which is crazy to think about. But um, a lot of people do. A lot of people say that Part Two is is better than their original. Um, and um, you know, they may be right. It's been a while since I've seen it. Um. I need to go back and and revisit these. Um, yeah, I actually haven't seen any of them. It's it's a it's a travesty, honestly. Really? That I, I did not realize so, that. Yeah, I need to I need to watch them. I need to keep up on them. Uh, cause, well, let's get together yeah. sometime. I have a, I have the Blu Ray collection. So oh yeah, let's do it. Yeah, we'll jump in. I, that was um that was a Black Friday grab for me one time. Nice. Um, yeah. So um. Yeah, so Empire Strikes Back and Godfather 2 for me. Uh, where are you going next? I'm going to just go along with the the kind of blockbustery theme that I, I went with The Dark Knight. And I'm going to go with Terminator 2, T2, Judgment Day. All right. And uh, this was actually a movie I revisited recently. Um, and man, it just, I mean, it holds up still uh, after after all these years. Yeah, it's incredible. It's scary. It's it's violent. Um, I mean, it's it's everything that you want in a in a blockbuster. And for sure, uh, Arnold is. It, it seems like at the peak of his powers at this time, and and is just mm-hmm. like absolutely awesome um, there. And then you have a, a strong, even though she's kind of crazy and kind of like a conspiracy theorist. Uh, you have you know Linda Hamilton as Sarah Connor. She's incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it's awesome. It's it's a really great movie. I forgot how good it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, James Cameron. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't go wrong with James Cameron, right, Jacob? Well, on <laughs> some of his later things. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, for, for those of you who don't know, Jacob is, a, uh, is a avatar hater. Yeah. Uh, Way of water is we, not on my list. <laughs> yeah. We, um, we won't get into that. Because Jacob will talk way too long about something he it's hates. True. That's that's not <laughs> healthy, Jacob. It's not healthy. Um, so uh, yeah, so we're back to me. Um, I have a couple that I'm that I'm trying to kind of torn between here. Um, I'm gonna pick one and hope that I get to come back and get grab the other one. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go Mad Max Fury Road. Mm. Um. Which I was thinking about it and I was like, is this a sequel or is it a reboot? Um, I think so. Yeah, I started Googling it and all the all of like the articles were like sequel, sequel, sequel. I was like, well, it's a sequel then. Um, Yeah, no, I definitely think it counts. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So Fury Road, in my opinion, is the best action movie of all time. Yeah, Um, it's just incredible. It's It's pure action perfect action movie from start to finish um and not just like it, you know it's dealing to with some like layered themes on top of that so i just i love that movie um so yeah uh yeah that's my third pick where are you going next uh well you know i two back to back blockbusters for me i'm just going to go with one of the biggest blockbusters we've ever seen top gun maverick this is uh <laughs> this is one it's recency bias probably but dead gummit this movie 
seeing it in theaters, I mean, just reminded you how good the movies are, you know, like and going yeah. to the to the theater. Uh, this is like, it, I mean, it probably is like, I would probably say this is my favorite theater experience I've I've had probably like just okay. watching a movie in the theater. It's that or Interstellar um, are two of just like, man, you see those movies in theaters and it's like, it's yeah. intense. It's, it's excellent. Um, but I'm a, I'm a huge Tom Cruise fan. Top Gun Maverick yeah. is, is phenomenal. And just like a lot of the stuff you're like, how do they do that? And then you go into all the behind the scenes and it's like, they actually just did that. Um, yeah. it's really cool. So I, I love it. Yeah. I mean, with movies like Tom Cruise in them, you can't lose. No. Yeah. Sorry. That was a on cinema at the cinema <laughs> reference there. Um, <laughs> Most of you will not get that. That's okay. It's probably for the best. You don't want to <laughs> go down that road. Um, all right. I've got another pick and I'm going to go back to what I was looking at before and go with Blade Runner 2049. Nice. Yep. Uh, Definitely on my list. Great movie. Um, yeah. I don't have a whole lot to say about it other than just like, Man, Denis Villeneuve uh, just like knocked it out of the park. Um, yeah, absolutely. In my, it's better than the original, in my opinion. I watched the original one a while back. I actually read um, "Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep," uh, mm -hmm. which is the book that it's based on, and uh, then I watched the movie, and um, it's good. But um, man, that twenty forty nine is just like incredible. Yeah. So no doubt. Yeah. What you got? I'm going to go Number with fourth pick Re return of the King. This Good. is uh return of the King is part of obviously the Lord of the Rings franchise. And mm -hmm. I grew up watching these movies. Um, I've probably seen these movies more than maybe any other movies, like at least franchise for sure. And sure. Uh, return of the King is just, I mean, it's excellent. It's, I mean, there's a reason why it won as many Oscars as it did. It's, just a really incredible culmination to, to the whole franchise and the whole series. Um, so it, it has a really special place in my heart. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, we're at my wife and I are actually listening through, um, slowly, but surely the, uh, Andy <laughs> circus narrated audiobooks, which are oh, nice. incredible. Um, yeah. And so uh, we're in the middle of two towers, like I think like dead middle of two towers. Um, nice. And uh, he actually does voices uh, for all the characters Andy Serkis does. And That's like awesome. most of them, he actually gets like spot on to the movie characters. Like <laughs> he does the voice and it sounds just like the, uh, the actors. Uh, so, yeah. He's just, Andy Serkis is great. Um, He's so talented. Yeah. Return of the King. I probably should have picked that already. Uh, so I'm kind of upset, but I'm not going to go two towers um, with my fifth pick. Uh, I'm just going to leave two towers on the board and I'm going to go with a movie that's near and dear to my heart. Um, you probably saw this coming at some point. Uh, I'm going with Paddington two. Mm, uh, I knew it. I mean, I mean, it doesn't get any better than a bear that is just there to teach all of us, you know, whether civilian or fugitive that really it's just all about being kind to one another. Um, I mean, it doesn't get any better. It doesn't get any better than, than a, a bear that loves marmalade teaching Brendan Gleeson how to make marmalade yeah. in jail. Like, I mean, what more could you want in a movie than, than that? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, it has a jailbreak, a jailbreak scene. I mean, come on. It's, I love Paddington too. It's a great movie. <laughs> so, and you know, Nicholas Cage, Nicholas Cage and Pedro Pascal agree, uh, based on the, Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> based unbearable on, uh, weight. Yeah. Unbearable weight. Uh, so Paddington two, um, I love that movie, but yeah. What are you going with at number five? You're in fifth. Pick. I'm, I'm torn between a couple of them. Um, okay. I'm torn. 
But I'm going to go with uh, another one that's near and dear to my heart, something I grew up watching a lot, and that's going to be Toy Story 2. Mm, great pick. Toy Story 2. The best 2. Toy Story movie. I would I would probably agree. It's the most rewatchable and most enjoyable one. Like Toy Story 3, I think a lot of people say is like the best one, but it's also like kind that's, of depressing. They do. They do, but I think they're wrong. <laughs> I, I I enjoy Toy Story 2 way more. So yeah. I haven't rewatched three in a long time. So I do need to rewatch it just to kind of see my rankings officially. But I still have yeah. Toy Story 2 number one for me just because it's so yeah. fun. Like it's and there's so many like just moments that just really like form my childhood as far as like just imagination goes, you yeah, know, just for sure. a lot of stuff like that. So it, it's awesome. Yeah, it's there's a lot going on in Toy Story 2 that's just like great. And I would argue so Toy Story 3, I love Toy Story 3. Like yeah. You tear up at the end like yeah, great great Toy Story movie. I would argue like has a little redundancy from Toy Story 2. That's one of the reasons I think yeah. it's not as good. Like you I have a similar you kind of have a similar villain in a different body sort of thing. Um yeah, that's I don't true. know. Anyways, toy I uh, great pick. Toy Story 2 is a great fantastic pick. I I'm struggling here because there's a lot that I still want to pick but we're only doing 7. So Yeah. I kept uh, I kept the number of movies we were choosing low because I knew it would make it a little tougher on us. Definitely. Um man, there's some I want to make my list a little more versatile and so I think what I'm going to do is let's see. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything. <laughs> I feel like right now I have a lot of, I guess not a ton of, most of my movies are serious, more serious. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go the comic book route. You have a comic book movie. I need one too. I'm going to go with Spider-Man two. Nice. Yeah, Great Sam pick. Raimi, Spider Man Two, Toby Maguire. Um I think I think Spider Man Two is better than the first one even. Um I agree. So that's that's kind of a that's kind of a trend with uh with all of my picks. They're they're movies that I think sequels that I think are better than the first one. Uh definitely. Maybe with the exception of Godfather. I'm not sure what I think there, but yeah, all of these other ones I, I think are the better of the two. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go with Spider-Man two great movie upside down kissing. Gotta love it. What more could you want? Yeah. I mean, and, <laughs> and Alfred Molina is awesome. Like people forget oh, yeah. how awesome he is. And that sequence where he's, he wakes up in the hospital is like genuinely terrifying. Like sure, that's some, yeah. that's some Sam Raimi horror right there. Oh yeah. Well, I'm yeah. going to go. Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say go ahead. Six pick for you. I'm going to go um I'm between two iconic franchises right now. Um Okay. And I think I'm just going to go on just enjoyability more with this one and I'm going to go Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Mm. Uh yeah, it was on my list is, for sure. This is the best Indiana Jones movie to me. Um it's really close cuz Raiders is just is awesome. Um, mm -hmm. but the addition of, of Sean Connery and just their back and forth in chemistry throughout the movie is like excellent. And, and there's just so yeah. many great one-liners. Um, there's even the great, like, you know, point of, you know, whatever you want to say about the Holy grail, you know, but it's like, yeah, of course Jesus wouldn't pick the flashy one, you know, I don't know. <laughs> there's just some, there's some cool stuff in it. I, I really like it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Great pick. Uh, I had thought about it, but uh, but yeah, it's been a long time since I've seen it. So like, you know, I didn't want to pick it because I was like, maybe maybe I wouldn't like it as much. I don't know. It just it's been a long time. Um, I'm realizing now I I picked the movie. I have two. Like other than Dark Knight, obviously, I have two superhero movies. Spider-Man 2 is one of them. I have uh -huh. another one that I have rated higher but it's too late now. So I'm going to share that. It's not my pick. Okay. Uh, Logan. Logan is on a my great list too. movie. Uh, so feel free to pick that if you want. I would argue, pick. but uh, I would argue that I, that's the best made superhero movie. 
just like, like ever. ever. I, yeah, it's so. I think it and Dark Knight. Um, yeah, other than I think Dark I, Knight, I think I have three movies that are superhero movies rated like a four and a half stars, nine out of ten, yeah. and it's it's um it's those two, Logan and The Dark Knight, and also uh, Into the Spider Verse. Uh, yeah. Um, I'll or, say I'll say Logan's the best Marvel movie ever. It is. I I would agree. I think it's the yeah. best. It's not MCU, uh, right. an MCU movie, but I think it's the best Marvel movie for sure. Um, you know, I I love Into the Spider Verse, but yeah, probably still Logan. Um, so yeah, I'm sticking with Spider Man Two though. Still a great pick. Um, but it's my last pick, so um. Yeah, it's it's hard. There's a few that I would like to pick. Um I'll maybe we can share some uh some like honorable mentions in a minute. Sure. But um I'm going to go with something off the wall. It's not something I have like I'm you know, I think I have it rated like three and a half stars or four stars. I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay. And it might not even be one that most people like are aware of. So this might hurt my my poll uh, chances, but I'm very it's some, intrigued. It, it gives it gives me some versatility with a very very different option from anything we've we've done. I'm gonna go with the trip to Greece. Um, Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So there's there's a series. Uh, it's you know usually referred to as the trip series. Um, yeah. It's this like um, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a pseudo documentary um like it's it's steve coogan and rob uh bryden uh they're two british comedians and um they basically like they they go on a road trip together and they're going to these like um kind of bed and breakfasts and uh across um i think in the first one they're going through um england or uh scotland i can't remember um but uh but yeah they're just kind of like doing it because they're going to review these restaurants and bed and breakfasts for a magazine or a, a write up of some sort and um it's really funny but it's it's like pseudo because they're playing themselves mm -hmm. um but it's also like scripted uh to a certain degree there's a lot of um obviously like they're two comedians so a lot of it is improv um, sure. but there's also, there's like, um, there it's scripted to a certain degree as far as like, what's going to like it, things that might come up or something like that. So yeah. I don't, I honestly don't know to what degree, like it's scripted and to what degree it's improv. Most fun, of though. their convert, most of their conversation is improv for sure. Um, awesome. but it's, it's hilarious. So you, you need to watch these movies sometime if you've never heard of these or, whatever um it looks like the first one is actually on pluto tv or tubi uh right now so you can go watch it for free with ads um you if you want to do that um the tri it's called the trip um but yeah so the trip to greece is actually the last one uh in the series uh i don't know if they're made i think it i don't think they're gonna make more um but yeah, there's there's four of them. Um, so there's the trip, the trip to Italy, the trip to Spain, and then the trip to Greece. Okay. And um, and yeah, the the trip to Greece is actually my favorite of the four. Um, you you know, there it's it's almost this like they're coming like to the end of their journey, and you kind of kind of see them age as you go through these mm. movies with them too. Yeah. And um, there's just this like heavy you know, they're funny, but they're also British. And so like, you know how the British are funny, yeah. um, but they, they joke about like very serious things. And so sure. you have these moments where they're like really coming to terms with like death and like, mm -hmm. just like the, the inevitability of it. And, um, you know, the, I guess how life is just like so short, um, and so like, it's extremely funny, their conversations, they do a lot of like impersonations. There's this bit in one of them where they're like, they're trying to see who can do the better, um, the better, uh, oh, my mind just went blank. Um, Alfred and, and Christopher Nolan's Michael Caine, 
Michael Caine. I don't know why I couldn't <laughs> think of Michael Caine. Uh, they're trying to like go, they're going back and forth of who can do the best Michael Caine impression. And it's that's awesome. hilarious. Like um, they're like, you know, I don't want to bury any more Batmans. And it's like, <laughs> how many Batmans are there? How many Batmans have you buried? <laughs> it's great. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. They're hilarious. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the trip to Greece just has this, I know I'm going way too long, but it just has this, like <laughs> this very, like, it's funny, but it also has this just very profound, uh, element to it that I just, it like, t it really spoke to me. So that's my last nice. pick, kind of like a off the wall pick, um, so along with it comes a recommendation to watch through the trip series when you get there the you chance. Go. So that's my last pick. Where are you going last, Jacob? I'm going to go. This is a tough one. I mean, we'll talk about some of the honorable mentions, um, but I'm going to go ahead and, and take Skyfall. Um, Great pick. Yeah. Skyfall was one that uh, I was really excited for. Uh, when it was coming out and it mm -hmm. definitely lived up to the hype, um, which was, which was awesome and even exceeded it. And, uh, and Javier Bardem just continues to be an incredible villain when he's on screen. For uh, sure. You know, in this one, no country for old men. If you've seen collateral, he's not really like a heavy villain, but he's, he's really excellent. His, his sequence there in collateral. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. Skyfall, it, it's, it's super intense, um, great action movie. And, uh, James Bond at, at arguably his best. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It it's, it's hard, like, because, um, I would Casino Royale is so good. It's hard to oh, say yeah. that, like, it's not the best of the series, but Skyfall to me is like right there with it. They're, I think they're both like just really good. James. Yeah. Bond movies, I think Skyfall is so. a little bit more complete in like, better pace than casino royale is because there's like a there's a point in casino royale like if you haven't watched in a while where like you get to it and you're like oh it's come the ending's coming up and then it goes on for like another like 30 minutes and you're like oh my gosh i forgot yeah how much of this is left um but it's mm -hmm. still casino royale still is like super awesome and you know it's you get a really raw 007 which is which is fun yeah 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 for sure. So that's our list. Um, I'm going to read them out. So uh, I went with uh, Empire Strikes Back, The Godfather Part 2, Mad Max Fury Road. Excellent. Uh, yeah, Blade Runner 2049, Paddington 2, Spider-Man 2, and The Trip to Greece. Uh, so that's my list. I'm happy with it. Uh, yeah. Jacob, uh, Jacob's list, list is uh, The Dark Knight. Uh, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, also known as T2. T2. Um, that's right. Uh, Top Gun Maverick. Uh, Return, uh, Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. Uh, Toy Story 2. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. And finally, Skyfall. Uh, we all know James Bond doesn't name his movies after himself. You just no. got to figure it out figure out if it's a James Bond movie or not. That's right. <laughs> um, yeah. So those are our list. Uh, we'll put a poll up and uh, let the people choose who, uh, who had the best draft. And so, yeah, I, you know, I had I, the off the wall pick at the end might hurt me, uh, but maybe people, it's a fun recommendation though. Pe yeah. Maybe people will appreciate that and uh, we'll see. I don't know. Yeah, you took some um, risks, and I, I think that I think that that's warranted. You know, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I didn't get really. Uh, I didn't get an animated movie in there. I wanted to. Uh, you probably picked my my favorite of the options. Um, <laughs> but uh, so yeah, I, despite I, my hat, I was not going to pick Space Jam two either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Terrible. Yeah. I'm not. We won't get into that. But uh, some honorable mentions for me. Um, uh. Yeah, so I'm trying to look through my list. Uh, I have things like uh, Incredibles 2 and How to Train Your Dragon mm -hmm. 2 as far as yeah. like animated uh, sequels. Both really good. Um, uh, you know, I mentioned Logan. Uh, 
you've got obviously two towers also aliens was one that i was oh yeah was struggling with uh alien the first one um is better in my opinion so it didn't kind of fall into my my category I was going with yeah. of like better than the first. Um, but aliens is still a great movie and James, another James Cameron, uh, edition there. Um, yeah. Uh, the last Jedi, I'm a last Jedi truther. Uh, so that might've got me some, that might've really hurt my list if I put that in. Yeah, there. I think so. <laughs> uh, but I already had an empire, so I didn't need to. Yeah. Um, Prisoner of Azkaban. I think Prisoner of Azkaban is the best Harry Potter movie. Um, it helps that it has a great director. Um, sure. But yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, you got the Rocky movies. Um, yeah, Rocky got, 3 was on my on my list. Yeah, we, we talked about the Mission Impossible movies. Um, I don't know. I was trying to figure out. So you have um, the the man Sergio Leone's like man with no name series. Mm -hmm. And I just don't know. Like, so the, I had the good, the bad and the ugly on my list, but I wasn't really sure. Like, can you consider that a sequel? I don't know. It's considered not a sequel. Is it considered a sequel? Yeah. Whenever I I was looking up, like what, like some of the best sequels just to kind of get like my brain running. And that was on Mm -hmm. there consistently. Okay. Okay. Well, um, it's, it's just hard. Cause like, they're not really like, related movies other than other than like the character and he doesn't yeah he's a man with no name and he has a different name in all the movies yeah <laughs> so i just wasn't sure is like are these just like people package these together because of like director like actor right. combo or is it actually sequels but yeah the good the bad and the ugly like probably should have been picked but um man if that's yeah. the case the uh the uh, Leo Scorsese cinematic universe is, is pretty crazy. If you consider all those direct <laughs> yeah, sequels sure. to each other. <laughs> yeah. There were some, um, there were some that I haven't seen uh, that I kind of wanted to mention just because they're things that I do want to see mm-hmm. uh, like Kill Bill volume two. I'm, I, it's the only, I think I haven't seen that in death proof from Tarantino. Yeah. I, I just haven't have seen never gotten around to it. Um, so Kill Bill Volume 2, I I liked significantly more than the first Kill Bill. Okay, Um, so So yeah, I uh, might have fit with my trend there. Yeah, um, but yeah, there's uh, the before series, uh, yeah, Yeah. before sunrise, the first one. I haven't seen them, so I can't, I haven't seen them them. either. Um, but I do have the criterion edition of the the trilogy, so I'm gonna get to it. Um, you have uh, uh, Satyajit Ray's uh, trilogy with a uh, uh, Indian director from the fifties with uh, uh, Pather Panchali is the first one, and then you have um, I think the second one is Apar Aparahito Aparajito. I don't know how to pronounce these, but yeah, it's supposed <laughs> to be an incredible trilogy and one that's been on nice. my list for a while. Never gotten around to it. Evil Dead Two, never never seen the Evil Dead movies. Me either, uh, but that one's considered one of those that's better than the original. Yeah, you have um, uh, Che Part Two. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, is is one that I've I've never seen the Che movies, and then uh, Sanjiro, which is a um, Akira Kurosawa. Uh, nice. Sanjiro is the sequel of is it Yojimbo? Is it? Am I right? Yes, Yojimbo is the one that's more well known samurai movie. And then Senjiro is the the sequel to it. Never seen either of those, but I love Kurosawa, so I'll have to get to nice. those. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's uh, that's some um, just honorable mentions. Things that you know, maybe one of those on that list you think uh, we should have picked, or maybe yeah, maybe you had some that we didn't even mention that we yeah. should have picked. Just let us know. But yeah, that's all we have this week. Uh, well, actually, we haven't done our recommendations of the week. Oh, that's right. Did you have? That's right. Did you have something prepared? Uh, yeah, I got one. Okay, go for it. Yeah. So I recently uh, finally got around to seeing Taxi Driver, and yeah. I also watched. Um, well, I watched Bottle Rocket. So my recommendation is, if you have a favorite director. 
go back and and watch maybe their first like their breakout uh mm-hmm. their breakout movie because uh there's just a lot there's a lot to to like in in so many of these um and i watched i watched one other movie i'm trying to remember what it was that was kind of like a, a breakout for um the director but uh I, i've also recently rewatched or, or watched for the first time the the rocky movies um yeah. so just kind of seeing some of these early early movies from either you know in rocky's case you know it's sylvester stallone uh and then and then some of these early movies from uh pretty pretty famous directors um mm-hmm. i think blood simple is is the cohen's first movie and that's on hbo max that's an excellent movie as well so i, I recommend go and watch your favorite director's first movie and just kind of see see what you think if you haven't seen it yeah because i think i think oftentimes directors like first movies which i mean taxi driver wasn't scorsese's first but right. um that was his breakout but you know going back and re-watching some of those old ones because i think they oftentimes can get lost uh in the shuffle with uh especially if they've got just so many good movies right yeah yeah that's great um you know i i had thought of something earlier and then i lost it so i'm gonna make my recommendation of the week to just go see the trip movies there you go uh, yeah the, you know i know the trip to greece is on hulu um don't start with that though watch them watch them in order um okay uh i think they're they're probably better that way um but they're they're just movies you can kick back like they're not like they're comedies and there's not like a plot or anything yeah and so you can just kind of kick kick back and enjoy them um you know, maybe throw on, throw it on during your lunch break and watch 30 minutes of it and pick back up yeah. later sort of thing. I like uh, a good just, hangout movie. Yeah. They're just fun. They're, they're fun movies. They have those like kind of heavy themes that'll come in and catch you off guard every once in a while. But, uh, sure. but still, uh, really fun. They make me laugh. Um, so yeah, I'll just make my recommendation that for, yeah. for this week and, uh, maybe, Maybe next week I'll come more prepared, but <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Jacob, uh, I know you were on last week, but uh, if you just want to share real quick where people can find you again, maybe they missed yeah. last week's episode. And so, yeah, yeah so let, you, let us know you where can, we can find you. You can find me on Twitter at Philly Tweetin. So P H I L L Y T W E E T I N. Uh, and I'm also part of the committed football guys podcast. Uh, so you That's can right. find us on Twitter at CFG pod. Um, we're yep. super active. We're super re- excited um, just about everything that's going on. I think by the time this episode has released, uh, we'll have covered the, the NFL draft. Um, so be looking out for, for new episodes talking about uh, the NFL draft and, and the impact that might have on, uh, on different players and things like that. So if you're an NFL sure. fan or a fantasy football fan, check us out. Yeah. And uh, part of our, podcast network that we're in together that's right the pertain podcast network there we go i never know if i'm saying that word right uh but yeah i think it's so, protean yeah. but protean it's, it's okay protean, it's a weird word people don't really know weird word yeah <laughs> but yeah so uh yeah check out uh yeah check out jacob uh on twitter and uh check out committed football guys podcast uh but other than that We will see you again next week. Uh, Jacob won't be back with us, but we'll have another guest uh, with us next week. Yes, an awesome guest uh, to talk about Rushmore. So look forward to that, and we will see you next week. Uh, I've been Eli Price, and uh, for Jacob Phillips, you've been listening to the Establishing Shot podcast. So we will see you again next time. Thank you so much for joining us on The Establishing Shot today. We hope you enjoyed the episode and got a lot out of it. Make sure before you go to like and subscribe uh, on all your podcast platforms, and especially on Spotify and Apple. If you could leave a rating and review, that would greatly help the visibility of the podcast, and I would greatly appreciate it. Again, if you go to establishingshotpod.com, you can find out all you need to know about the show, where to find us on the social media platforms, where to find us podcast wise, YouTube, uh, and you can even leave a voicemail there on the website on the right side of your screen. 
So click that if you want to give a comment or ask a question about the show. Uh, just feel free to leave a voicemail. We'd be happy to feature that on the show. And also, if you just want to email rather than leave a voicemail, you can email us at establishingshoppod at gmail.com. And we would be happy to answer your question there or feature a question or comment on the show if it pertains to uh, the episodes. So please do that. And we would love for you to join the Establishing Shop family. You can, again, find where to do that on the donate page at establishingshoppod.com. We hope you have a great week and we look forward to seeing you again next time. We were happy here for a little while. But look, I figure it this way. Better to be king for a night than schmuck for a lifetime. <laughs>